been a year since my last apartment hunting video. So just last week, I got an email from my DC office being like, hey, are you staying or are you gonna be heading out? So I feel like it's a good opportunity to tour more buildings in downtown Los Angeles, which I wanna preface. I know not everyone's gonna like downtown, but I love it, so I wanna stay here. I have my apartment tour in about 10 minutes right now, so let's head on out. I was in a bit of a rush, so I didn't really get to go through my non-negotiables and just the things that I would like. So the first thing is I need square footage that's greater than 875, just because right now my unit is close to 900. So if I do see myself leaving this building, it needs to be into a bigger space. The second thing is just good, bright lighting. As a content creator, I rely heavily on natural lighting so any sun-filled building I'm a sucker for. Budget wise I would like to stay under 3k and for the things that I would like an in-unit washer dryer, good amenities like a gym and a swimming pool, a rooftop so that way I can host friends and I would like a good view of either the cityscape or a neighboring building with pretty architecture. But I also want to stop you right here because if you think this is a video of me touring a whole bunch of skyscrapers and floor to ceiling window units you are totally wrong and maybe this video might not be for you. I'm much more into historic buildings where they have modernized the inside to still maintain and keep the charm and personality and of course those prices stay low too. We're starting off at the Pacific Electric Lofts in Gallery Row Historic District. So this is located at the intersection of Main Street and 6th Street. So this building used to be a train station for the Pacific Electric Railway back in the early 1900s. So even though it's a really cool building, it's not in the greatest location. Directly behind it is Skid Row, which is an area where the unhoused take shelter. So you see a lot of drug use, trash, tag buildings. And so throughout the years, a lot of the inhabitants of Skid Row make their way towards the PE loft building. And just next door, we have Hotel Cecil, which is known for the serial killers, true crime cases. It is now open for low income housing. And so we see a lot of loitering. Every time I pass by that building, I always get catcalled and overall it's just very dirty. Touring the PE lofts was actually pretty fun because they're all self-guided tours so you can explore the building on your own without a leasing agent breathing down your neck. But unit number one is 702, 915 square feet for 1894, which actually isn't a bad price for the amount of square footage. But as soon as I walked in, I was really thrown off by the doors on the side there just because it's a little weird walking into a home just to be met by even more doors. But there were two closet spaces, very small closet spaces. And then further, down the hallway were met by a standard size closet but I think what's ruining it for me already is that this hallway is taking up so much square footage and it's not necessarily functional. Further down we're in the bathroom now which has a stand-in shower. Everything in here looks pretty modern and I'm actually really happy with this size. I've seen so many downtown LA bathrooms just be so stupid big that it just eats up at all the square footage and now we're into the main area and all I can say about this kitchen is that it's so Oh, freaking huge as someone who doesn't cook I definitely don't need this big of a kitchen, but I love, again, how everything is super modern. The open area here that serves as the living room and the bedroom is okay, ends up being like one really big square, but now I know why the price is pretty low on this unit. The views, y'all, it's facing the inside of the building, so I definitely want to face the outside, so at least we see a little bit more city, we see more of the buildings. I was doing a quick lighting test here and loved it until I saw that behind me, okay, so don't want to complain too much, but I love that they have an in-unit washer and dryer but they built it right in front of this window so proportions are just off and it looks awkward so ultimately this unit is awesome for the price and maybe for someone who's new to downtown LA but I'm definitely looking for a space where I can live and work in but also don't get me started on these dogs <laughs> Up next is a corner unit. I was most excited to check this place out. So square footage is over a thousand for twenty three seventy four, which is still pretty damn awesome for how much space it is. The only thing I'm going to complain about is that it's on the second floor of the building, which means it's closer to street level. And if you're unfamiliar with downtown LA, it is a loud loud environment everything from cars to people screaming and specifically behind the pe loft is los angeles street which is full of a lot of vendors and small businesses so you hear them interacting all day long but the first thing i noticed is that as soon as you walk in on the right hand side we have that closet it's exposed so we don't have any doors or curtain to just cover it up and if you have a messy closet like i do 
everything is going to be visible. The bathroom, super nice. Love that it has a bathtub. But can you see all the light that's just flooding in? That just makes me very happy. I'm okay with the views. Yes, we're looking at Skid Row, but the other street here faces towards another building, and I'm totally okay with that. The kitchen doesn't take up too much space since it lines the walls, and these high ceilings obsessed the only thing i do want to mention about having so many windows is that the ac is going to be working overtime because it gets pretty warm in here one thing i did notice about this unit is that it's missing a standard size closet both of them were fairly small especially this one that's supposed to be in the bedroom area this serves better as just like a coat closet and as a fashion content creator this definitely is not enough space for all of my clothes but overall i'm very impressed with this unit so i'm going to jot it down as a possible contender let's talk about the amenities that the pe lofts has because they're so awesome they have a lounge room where you can play pool and foosball the gym is one of the largest i've ever seen in downtown la and i really wish i could have captured the rooftop but they have barbecue grills up there a lot of space a swimming pool jacuzzi tvs and even a little doggy park here's a quick little recap of pacific electric lofts and i love this building everything from the units to the amenities the only thing that sucks is a location with skid row behind us and hotel cecil right next door it just doesn't seem worth it because i've been mugged before and it's a traumatic experience that has affected my mental health and i just don't want to increase my chances of that happening again Okay, let's take a quick little break from apartment hunting so I can let you in on my favorite jewelry brand right now. It's called Ana Luisa, and they're a sustainable jewelry brand that uses recycled materials, and all of their pieces are made from metals that are safe, hypoallergenic, and tarnish resistant. Everything you see on the website is designed and crafted by their in-house team of designers, and I was lucky enough to work with them to create my own piece the Danielle necklace. This necklace took a whole year to make and so Anna Luis and I went through a whole bunch of meetings and samples to finally perfect it. And I also filmed the entire creative process. So if you wanna watch it, I have the video down below. My all time favorite shape is a star. So it only made sense that we had it as a statement pendant. All of the jewelry I wear outside of this necklace has a toggle closure. So I wanted to incorporate that into this look. And as far as materials, it is a brass base and has recycled 14 karat gold plating. And the length of this is 18 inches. I'll the jewelry from the website is delivered in packaging that's made from 100% recycled paper and even comes with this really cute Anna Luisa branded pouch. So if you want to get the Danielle necklace for yourself, I'll have it linked down below in the description box, but I would say take advantage of the holiday sale that's happening right now. So if you buy two items, you get 25% off. If you buy three items, you get 30% off. And if you buy four items, you get 35% off. I do earn a small commission from the sale of every Danielle necklace. So all the proceeds that we do total, I want to donate them to a cause of your choice so comment down below who we should donate it to if you've already purchased the danielle necklace thank you so much tag me on instagram so that way i can share you guys on my story but if you are needing a little bit more styling inspo i have plenty of reels and videos on tiktok and instagram but also a huge thank you to Anna Luisa for even making this opportunity possible not everyone gets to say that they made a freaking necklace so huge thanks to them let's get back to apartment hunting Building number two is Union Lofts, and I actually really like the location of this place. So it's sandwiched between Jewelry District and Fashion District. I personally spend a lot of time in Fashion District, so the closer I can be to it, the better. But something to call out is that there are two abandoned buildings across Union Lofts. We have this one here, this other one that's already been tagged up. So this just tells me two things. You gotta beware of squatters, and there might be potential construction sometime in the future. We're up on the seventh floor and the first window we see kind of just faces towards other units. So not very exciting, low key kind of scary, but the square footage is over a thousand. I forgot the exact number, but our budget is going up with this one. We're at 2,700. I don't mean to complain too much, but the layout is weird and I don't mind a weird layout as long as it's functional. I'm also not the biggest fan of light colored wood. Earning some points for an in-unit washer and dryer, but as we continue walking, we're met with the bathroom those floors absolutely love this is a type of historic personality and charm that i'm looking for this is something that i had never seen before the bathroom was broken up into three different sections so on one far end we had the toilet that had its own door in the middle we had the sink or the vanity and in the very far end we have the bathtub which again has its own sliding door and then there was this really weird nook that was kind of an extension of the kitchen and in the very back we have the bedroom it wasn't a bad size either you can definitely fit a bed in 
there and even maybe a little office space but looking outside of that window there it was a little disappointing because you just have a view of a parking lot so i was starting to question why this unit was so expensive because it doesn't have good views even though it's on the seventh floor and the layout is just weird and then the room does come with just like a standard size closet but i also wasn't a fan of those wooden doors the leasing agents did take me up to the rooftop and this is one of the smallest gyms i've ever seen in downtown los angeles it literally only had those three machines and the weights on the inside and outside but they did say that you're able to use the amenities in the other buildings that they own so at least that's a plus and i believe it's just right across the street from here as someone who loves to have friends over and host little events up on the rooftop this was slightly disappointing just because it's very small and even though there is a lot of seating area it definitely isn't big enough to cater to all of the residents in the building but i will admit the views were absolutely breathtaking here's a quick little recap of union lofts and to be honest i'm gonna scratch this one all together just because there wasn't any wow factor in the unit or in the amenities and i think the pricing is a little too high for what it is i wasn't impressed i won't be applying this one's off our next building is Gas Company Lofts, which is sister building to Pacific Electric Lofts. But what's cool about this one is that it used to be used as offices by Southern California Gas Company, and then it was later converted to lofts. But the surrounding area, we've got two parking structures. It's a little boring, but this gray parking structure in particular is the block. So yes, it looks very unimpressive from the back, but on the other side, this is what it is. It's full of retail stores, restaurants, and if you've never been to Joey DTLA, I highly recommend it. They have increased their prices, but I promise you it's worth it. And then on the street level, we have the post office. As a vintage reseller, that is a freaking dream. We're not off to a good start. When I came in for my scheduled tour, security wasn't at their desk, so a resident actually let me in, and I just waited in the lobby until they showed up, and they didn't. I waited 15 minutes for management to actually come and grab me. I don't think security understands how big of a role they have in ensuring the security of their residents, but this also just tells me, like, will they be reliable if a crime were to happen? But eventually, I made my way into our first unit, and it was confusing as hell in these hallways, even with all the signage. We're on the ninth floor for this unit here, and I'm really surprised that they even had this for me to view because I did specifically tell them that I was interested in units with square footage larger than 875 and this one sits at 564 which is significantly smaller than what I was looking for and what I'm currently in but I still decided to view it just in case maybe one of you guys is new to the area and you are looking for a loft that's a little bit smaller in size this is a perfect spot for a single person it has high ceilings I love the concrete floor I'm just a sucker for dark hardwood, especially in the kitchen. But let's just talk about that bathroom because did you see that vanity? Why is it so clunky? And then we do have just like a standard size closet. And the lighting isn't too bad either. But one thing I want to complain about are the windows. You can't see clearly through them because we have that metal wiring in them. And it kind of has this like groove to the glass. So you can't clearly see through it. But you do have a view of the pool. Here's the second unit they had me see in their building. And again, Again, I was questioning why they had me see this unit because yes, it's on the 10th floor, but it's only 658 square feet, which is a lot smaller than what I was looking for. But I will admit that price tag of 1824 is not bad. I also want to mention that I didn't know which units I was going to view until five minutes before our scheduled time. This just made me feel like the leasing office wasn't as attentive as they should have been. And luckily for me, the commute wasn't very far. It was only about a 20 minute walk. But imagine if this were someone who was commuting from like another city or from the valley. I would have been kind of disappointed. But again, I just wanted to show it off in case this is your dream loft, totally your style. But I did bug them to see a larger unit. It actually isn't ready yet, but they still gave me access. And here it is, unit 605. It's over a thousand square feet for a price of only $2,093 a month. That is literally unheard of here in downtown Los Angeles. That is such a good deal. So I was actually expecting the worst, but as soon as I walked in, yes, it's a little dark. Yes, you can obviously tell they're still working on it, 
but it's not bad. I'm not totally sure what's going on here in the corner, but I think the price is fairly low because of the type of unit that it is. It's very long, but it's long vertically, not necessarily horizontally. And also it faces the block, the back of the block. So aesthetically, it's not very nice outside and you don't get too much light that really floods the apartment. Overall, this apartment is really nice. You have the high ceilings, the dark wood floors. It's very spacious, so enough space for two people and even a pet. But at the very far end, you have the bathroom, which is a pretty decent size and it comes with the bathtub. I'm not the biggest fan of the colorful tile because I feel it then limits the colors that you can use when you're actually interior decorating. But everything was modern, sleek, very open and clean. And so one thing I did notice is that they don't have in-unit washer and dryers. I also checked outside. The view wasn't too bad. Yes, it's a little plain. The parking structure is a little tall, so it does block quite a bit of sun. But I also like that the kitchen was fairly small. It didn't take up too much space, but I also love that it was fairly modern and darker in color. So it'll fit perfectly with my personal style. But I did seriously love this apartment. I was keeping it on my list of places to actually put in an application. As I was walking out of the building, I did come across a communal laundry room and it has three washers, three dryers. I'm just happy they at least have something because off the top of my head, I wouldn't know where the closest laundry mat in downtown LA would be. Here's a quick little recap of gas company lofts. I really like this building and I really like the location too. It's so central down the street. We also have Metro, but I think what kills it for me is security. This is an issue that I'm dealing with right now with my building and it's just hard when I have friends come over and they're not buzzed in right away. Uber Eats doesn't get buzzed into the lobby and so I lose my food. I get a lot of packages not only from USPS but also international which don't have access to our building so I do need security to be there to let them in. And I just want to ensure that I move into a building where I can count on and rely on security. This next building I'm super excited to even walk into. I've always wanted to go into it. It is the Reserve Lofts. It used to be a Federal Reserve Bank building that was later converted to Live Work Lofts. And this location is very central. It's on the busy street of Olympic, but walking distance to the Crypto.com Arena and the Convention Center. I was able to bypass security and just walk straight in through a side door and this was the view. All these packages left unattended is a nightmare. When people say they live in downtown Los Angeles, this is a space that I envision. An actual loft, it being very industrial, and for this unit being only 658 square feet, this place looks freaking huge, and it's only 1824 a month. I love it. The bathroom is very spacious, has a tub inside. Outside of the window, we didn't have the greatest view, but still have plenty of sunlight coming in. And what I especially loved is that the leasing agent was telling me that this building is specifically live work loft, so a lot of the units are occupied by small businesses, so just about everyone is very goal and career oriented. Initially, I thought the second floor was going to be so awesome because you have to climb a ladder to get there. I was so scared to come down. I can't imagine that if you had your bedroom at the top, if you wake up in the middle of the night to go pee, being all groggy kind of out of it, I know I would fall off that second floor. This gym was so big, I almost feel like I need to pay a membership just to work out here. I see myself living here. I love everything from the historic building, the units, the tenants. I love how career oriented they are. I feel like it'll keep me motivated and in the right headspace. Also, the free parking isn't bad, but it all depends on how much rent you pay. She told me that the higher you pay, the more likely you are to get free parking, but there is a wait list. Ultimately, I just don't think I could do a unit that has a loft ladder that was just so scary but i will for sure keep my eye on this building in the future we're off to our next building and for obvious reasons i am not showing the outside of this building because i put an application in i've been waiting four days to hear back now to see if i was either approved or rejected but i have so much anxiety right now i'm not even kidding but i've been pooping nervous pooping like five six times a day and the funny thing is that this apartment goes against everything in my non-negotiables like it's fairly dark 
It has light wood flooring and cabinetry. The kitchen is outdated and pretty damn huge. It also doesn't have an in-unit washer dryer, no parking, no rooftop, no pool. I'm literally losing so many amenities. But the thing that I was sold with is that it's open yet at the same time pretty private with the walls and the square footage is over 1600. I feel like this space is big enough where I can have my own work studio and not having to break it down every single day the way I do in my current space and then my husband will have his own office where he can expand on his small business without me always interfering into his area. On the plus side they do have a gym. It's a really sad tiny little gym but it's better than nothing. Y'all I'm moving. My application was approved. This is just so unexpected. I thought I was gonna have the same result that I did last year with this apartment hunting video but I'm moving at the end of this month so I'm starting 2024 in a new building in a new unit and funny enough the very first apartment that I toured of the day was the one I applied to so I wasn't expecting to like it so much but realistically I don't think I'll be able to find any other location or building that's that well priced for the amount of square footage. Unless you know, let me know down below in the comments. The location is okay, I'm familiar with it and I'm still walking distance to Fashion District which is awesome because I'm literally there all the time but I'm excited to finally have a couch. I haven't had a couch in like four years and if you have any like interior design Pinterest boards or like Instagram pages that you always stock, drop them down below so that I can get some inspo. But I want this to be like my first adult apartment that has no Ikea furniture, this rack gone, my table gone, my bed frame gone, it's all from Ikea. So I think I'm ready to like step it up. But if I'm totally honest with myself, my current place right now is very cluttered. I have a lot of little knickknacks. I just outgrown this space because I work here and I also don't obviously live here. So 24 seven, I'm in this loft. So hit me up on Instagram, I am twinell underscore. If you wanna call dibs on any of my like home decor little knickknacks, fair word though most of it is very cute and pink. I will be doing a tour of my place before I move out so if any of you guys are interested it has an amazing view, natural lighting, awesome amenities but let's do a quick little recap of the buildings that I want to go tour. Let's start off with PE lofts. This building could be my dream building if it weren't for the location. The location is so bad. We have Skid Row right behind it which I've been in downtown for four years now. Every year it gets worse and worse, and yes, there are resources to help the unhoused, but they're just Band-Aid solutions, so nothing is really getting better. Hotel Cecil also opened up this year, and honestly, it hasn't been the greatest thing for the neighborhood. I pass by there all the time to get to Fashion District, and I'm constantly catcalled. I'm always, literally just the other day, I was by some man in his car. There's a lot of loitering that happens right outside by men, and so, Literally every time I'm passed by, I'm always uncomfortably approached by a man. So I definitely wouldn't feel safe as someone who's alone until like late in the afternoon. Let's talk the union building now. So I only saw one unit and the layout was weird. I felt like it was a little too expensive. The rooftop was pretty disappointing. The gym was pretty small too, but if you are big on amenities, you're able to use amenities in the building and in any of the other ones that management owns. Gas company lofts, a good one. Location is awesome, very central to restaurants and retail. The unit's super clean, the price super reasonable. So yes, yes, yes. The last building is the reserve building, and I feel like if they had more units available for me to check out, I probably would have applied. It's a definition of like a cool, creative, and like typical downtown LA loft. Really, the reason why I pass is just that loft ladder that shit was so scary and mate call me a baby but I want to see you up there and then try to get down I was like I don't think I can do that I also have like a busted knee if you want to check out any of the buildings that I toured I have all the addresses and the info down below in the description box but don't forget that my Anna Luisa Danielle necklace is now available so it's best to get it right now while the holiday sale is happening but expect some moving out content happening real soon we can just package my apartment together but as always y'all I do post videos at least once a week I'll see you on the next Bye!